night, guys. It is a gray and gloomy, soon to be stormy, Ides of March 2022. That would make it Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. Beware the Ides of March and every other uh, day of the year here in the end times. But uh, I'm getting hungry, and the little dog and I uh, have an invitation to go. Uh, eat this, eat one of our fellow earthlings to go eat this factory farmed pig that my buddy is uh, cooking up uh, down the street. But I should have, but before I go and, uh, and eat one of my fellow earthlings, uh, just we just need to check in with a couple of our fellow earthlings here and see how animal-human conflicts don't always end with the fellow earthling. Uh, well, they usually do, but sometimes on their way out, at least our fellow earthlings get to even the score a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put this fellow earthling down. And many versions of, of this story, the past, I flagged this story a couple of days ago, but I've been too busy to uh, get back and actually read it. Hallelujah. Camel kills two people on Tennessee farm, then attacks cop car. There you go. All right, we have a killer camel, cop uh, chasing camel on the loose in Tennessee. A rampaging camel on the loose in Tennessee killed two men and then attacked a police car, according to authorities. Deputies responded Thursday to the Shirley Farms in Obion, where they found Bobby Matheny, age 42, and Tommy Gunn, age 67, unconscious on the ground, according to the sheriff's office. Police said the men had just been attacked by the camel, which was running free on the property when deputies arrived. Yes, uh, as deputies were attempting to load the victims into a waiting ambulance, the camel emerged, emerged, I don't know where, and again started to attack. But this time, it targeted a sheriff's office vehicle. It was at this time officers had to put the camel down for the safety of everyone on the scene. Yes, meaning they killed the camel. Yes, and while the camel was dying, Matheny and Gunn succumbed to their injuries and died at the scene. Yes, it's not clear how the camel got loose, but Shirley Farms is also home to Pumpkin Barn, Pumpkin Barn, a playground and a popular petting zoo. The incident remains under investigation. While camels rarely attack people, Debbie Metzler, the Associate Director for Captive Animal Law Enforcement for PETA, said animals will act beyond the norm when they are kept in captivity otherwise known as thrown in prison, said Metzler from PETA, quote, when animals are exploited for entertainment, this, you know, this behavior of killing people is not surprising. It is tragic, but not surprising, and both animals and humans are at risk in situations like this. So, at least the camel uh, had a little bit of fun before being put down. But of course, you know, being down here, I got about four more weeks down here in the oasis of freedom in the Sunshine State, uh, hoping that Sancho Panza is not being, uh, get eaten by an alligator. I am surrounded by these damn things. I hear them uh, croaking all night. But I want to thank the Palm Beach 
post and this fellow named Frank Sarabino for finally coming to the defense of alligators. Take it away, Frank Sarabino, and speak for the alligators. Alligator that bit cyclist in Martin County Park gets a bad rap. Yes, he does. Tell us about it, Frank. Somebody needs to speak up for the alligator. I'm talking about the one that used to live in Halpatoki Regional Park in Marion County. The park is surrounded by 500 acres of wetland preserves, which is prime real estate for an alligator. And the park's name, Halapatoki, comes from the Seminole language. It means river of large alligators. Yes. <clears throat> so, if you are an alligator in Halpatoki Regional Park, I think it is reasonable to assume that you are exactly where you ought to be, even if some of your former habitat has been converted to a roller hockey rink, a frisbee golf course, and pickleball courts to amuse those warm-blooded, relatively new, in invasive species of mammals who are now inhabiting the area. This week, one of the alligators was removed from the park after being designated a nuisance. And I think that this alligator, uh, I think she was just moved somewhere else. I don't think they killed her. If they did, they're being very hush-hush up uh, about it. It was news around Florida and the world. Here is a sample of the headlines from the Independent in the UK, quote, Florida man seriously injured after falling off bike and getting bitten by alligator. Here is from, uh, I guess this is, it's in a Spanish, Spanish language newspaper, not sure from where, quote, Florida man seriously injured after being attacked by an alligator. And of course, right here from the Orlando Sentinel, gator attacks cyclist who fell from bike. Back to Frank. I know from experience that it is, that it is hard to write headlines that tell the whole story, but if you just read these headlines, you might get the idea that this was an alligator who had little tolerance for bad biking skills, or that this was a gator just waiting for his chance to take a bite out of the first biker who took a tumble near him, although I think it was a her, they, but uh, you know what we're saying. At the very least, it paints Florida as a strange place. Not only will falling off your bicycle in Florida skin your knees, but you might also be attacked by an alligator. This will not happen to you in Indiana. And this story comes during what already has been an eventful summer when it comes to Floridians and alligators. Earlier this month, a woman in Valrico in Hillsborough County took a swim in a retention pond frequented by alligators. She later was found dead with wounds that were consistent with an alligator attack. And last month, a man snorkeling in the Mayaka River in search of prehistoric shark's teeth ended up with 34 stitches in his head when he was bitten by an alligator in the brown murky water. When people are injured or killed by alligators, it is frequently, frequently gruesome, but it is also very rare, 
there are an estimated 1.3 million alligators living in the state and on average about seven unprovoked bites to humans per year. And this uh, begs the question, the definition of an unprovoked bite. Compare that to dogs in Florida who average 600 human bites per year that result in hospitalization. So it turns out that the cyclist in the, in Stewart, in the Stewart Park lost control of his bike while riding across a wooden bridge along a trail there. The cyclist fell from his bike and tumbled down a six-foot embankment into a body of water where an eight-foot female alligator happened to be minding her own business in a place where she belonged and there's a pretty good uh, chance that she was uh, protecting a nest, although I've never found this detail. Uh, it, it was an eight-foot alligator, uh, female, anyway. Usually these nuisance alligator stories involve a gator that has wandered onto a golf course or somebody's backyard swimming pool. But in this case, the nuisance animal may have been the human. If alligators had their own newspapers, I suspect the headline would read, Nuisance Human Attacks Innocent Female Protecting Her Nest or Mother Gator Bites Human to Repel Unprovoked Attack on Her Young. John Davidson, the nuisance animal trapper who was dispatched to take the alligator from the park, said the alligator was most likely reacting to what she perceived as a threat. Said Davidson, quote, you have got to be careful when you're around the water, especially this time of year. The females are sitting on their nest and are particularly aggressive, close quote. It is also worth mentioning that as long as we share our state with so many alligators, we might want to understand them better. To do this, it helps to realize that an alligator's brain is the size of a lima bean and weighs only about nine grams. To put it another way, it would take 50 alligators to get one pound of alligator brain. The adult human brain is the size of two clenched fists and weighs about three pounds, which would take 150 alligators to equal. The alligator brain is not geared to understanding that a tumbling bicycle rider rolling down an embankment towards its nest might just be a big creature who is more of a threat to himself than anybody or anything else. Says the Alligator Advisory Council, quote, alligators will eat almost anything, including each other. They bite and fight to eat, court, defend, or protect their territory. The winners are sometimes badly scarred and alligators with missing legs, bobtails, or blinded eyes are not common. Still, they mostly shy away from humans unless they are fed, challenged, or foolishly approached or harassed, close quote. Another headline just in from Alligator Gazette, quote, female gator teaches lesson, shows mercy on human who attacked 
her nest after falling from contraption. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, uh, Frank, for uh, speaking for the alligators. The alligators, I think, uh, were here pretty much from the time uh, Florida rose out of the sea. You know, they probably evolved from these saltwater crocodiles. But anyway, uh, three cheers for the alligators and the camels and uh, those rogue elephants. And any chance uh, any one of our fellow earthlings gets to even the score. But right now I have to wrap this up uh, because I have one of my factory farmed fellow earthlings with my name on it. I think I can smell it on the barbecue. Get out there and enjoy uh, eating your fellow earthlings while you still can. And beware the Ides of March. My guys.